Hello, this is Eric with Data Store. Thank you for joining the fourth and final video in our series. I have installed the software, tape drive, and configured the software to back up to disk. So now we're ready to configure the software to vault to tape. So we're going to spend some time in the lab configuring a vault preparing tapes and creating a vaulting store task. But first, we'll spend some time talking about vaulting to help you with your understanding. The vault is a redundant copy of archive restore points that already exist on disk that are then written to tape in their deduplicated state. Vaulting can be scheduled to write new restore points to tape regularly. In this case, only the unique data from the new restore points has to be appended to the tape. Vaulting is configured on a per store basis. The minimum you can vault to tape is a single restore point from a single archive. The maximum you can vault to tape with a single vault task is every restore point in every archive in the store. You need at least one vault task per store to vault all archives in all stores. You can set each vault to use the same volume set. A volume set is just a set of tapes. So now let's move to the lab and we will configure vaulting. We're going to prepare tapes with a label, and then we're going to assign each tape to a volume set. A vault target is a volume set, not an individual tape. Once we have the tapes prepared, we'll create a vaulting store task. The first time you create a vault task, a vaulting properties wizard will run if it has not already been configured. And that's how we'll get the vaulting properties put in place. So we're going to right click on the LTO tape drive in the left pane and load the drive. This means that there is a tape sitting in the slot for the tape drive that the machine can ingest and then we'll be able to see it here. Now that the tape has been loaded we see name for the tape in the center pane. We can right click and our next step is to label and assign this tape. A label consists of a six-digit volume ID plus a media ID which indicates the LTO generation of the tape, such as LTO6. If your tape came with a barcode label, affix the label to the tape cartridge and then enter it here. This is our preferred method for tracking tapes. If you do not have a barcode label, then you can just use a six-digit prefix joined to the LTO generation, and we'll label the tape with this number. The next tape we insert will have a unique volume ID, incremented that number by one, and then we'll assign the tape to a volume set. Let's click the button to add a volume set, and we'll assign our new volume to a volume set which is just a collection of volumes. I did not choose to encrypt the data on tape, but we can set that if we want to. So now I have my first volume or tape labeled with 123456L6 and assigned storage to tape. Our next step is to create a store vault task. So the name of our store is storage. I'm going to click on that under all stores and we'll create a store task. I want to choose to create a store vaulting task because this is the first vaulting task we're configuring. It's going to initiate a configure vaulting properties wizard where we answer some one-time uh, preparation questions. We want to choose a cache drive location. So in this case, I have prepared a volume for the cache. So at this point, if I want to encrypt the vault with 256-bit encryption, I need to create a passphrase, and then we need to manage that passphrase company-wide with a management uh, protocol so that there are always two people that know the passphrase at any time, 
and that uh, it's stored off site in case of a disaster where you may need this passphrase if you lose your archive manager server and you need to recover data from a vault that has been encrypted you will need to know the passphrase otherwise your data on the vault is useless to you the next screen is to enter what we call an owner ID that identifies the organization that has the vaults on tape. So you might use your company domain. And now we can finish. So that was a one-time wizard, and now it opens our Create Store Vaulting Task window. We're going to choose the tape volume set and select that tape volume set so that our vault will write to a volume set. We can add additional volumes to the volume set as needed. Now we have some additional options to choose from. We can choose to copy all the archives in the store if we're running multiple protection plans. Uh, we may have remote computer protection plans running that write to the same store. Or we can select to vault only uh, one or more protection plans that uh, we deem more important for vaulting. Next we can uh, get more granular about what we want to vault to tape by choosing to copy only the most recent recovery point or recovery points within a date range or we can choose to just copy all the recovery points. The last window, the defaults are fine. And then we'll choose how often we want to vault this data to tape. So since our plan runs at 7, we'll schedule the vault task to run at 10. And now we can see our storage vault under the All Tape Vaults node in the left-hand pane. This will populate with the archives we've selected to vault to tape and the restore points that we've selected to vault to tape. I'm going to go back to the Local Plans node and look at my protection plan that we had running. Uh, it's finished, and now if I select the Restore action from the right pane, the calendar has a date in bold and a restore point has been generated. So I'm looking at the uh, restore point on disk in the storage store and I want to write that to tape. So it's scheduled to write to tape this evening, but I can also manually start it. If I click on my store and then store tasks in the right pane, I see the vault task I've created in the center pane. I'm going to manually run that. Now that the vaulting task has finished, I'll go to the storage vault in the left pane, and now I have a vault view of the restore point.